The weather's supposed to be really good this weekend. I'm gonna get out of here. Alright. Do you wanna go camping? Yes, please. Let's go. Alright. What are we gonna drive this time? What do you wanna drive? I'm kind of thinking I'd like to take the Subi. Why would that be? It gets really good to gas mileage, still has four wheel drive and good ground clearance. We've got a great stereo system. We can travel light. We can do car camping like I've been wanting to do for so long. What's this car camping stuff? I've never heard that phrase Sleep before. Sleep in the back. Huh? Travel That's light. That's even possible? Yes. I didn't think yes. I'd even fit back there. Minimal. Is it actually flat? Mostly. Uh, mostly. 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 Famous last words. Maybe 3% not flat. Okay. We can do this. Probably we consider it a contender, but maybe we should check the other car too. Maybe we can compare the two. Alright. Okay. But this one's also four wheel drive. Has just as much ground clearance. The premium sound. Lots of extra room. We can take the trailer and it gets almost as good a fuel economy. Now that we don't have to tie anything down or cover it on the way there, we risk it blowing out. But it could double as our tent. Our tent. Oh, all the tools and equipment. What are we going to do? Sleep on your toolboxes? Good. I haven't thought about that. I don't really have a plan, but where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. I can see how much you want it really bad. All right. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Oh, hey, you're here. Welcome. Welcome to Board Tree Camp. Right now, we're allowed to have a real wood fire, even though it's July, with a campfire permit. They've got the place set up to where there's fire breaks. There's a Cal Fire Station only 20 minutes from here. So you are allowed to have a campfire with some restrictions, which we'll go over in just a little bit. But in the meantime, why not make yourself comfortable? Which would you like? We've got, like you noticed, I was taking a nap. Just chilling in these zero gravity chairs. Gonna lock it into place, flip over the sun visor. Oh man, I tell you, I'm not much of a hammock person, but this is fantastic. And it's even got little built-in pillows. You don't like the pillow? Fine, flip it out of the way. Doesn't matter, no pillow. Just kick back. If you wanna burn your face, that's up to you. You want something a little more upright. These are perfect. Now granted, I find that it kind of sags in the bottom a little bit. Next thing you know, you're down like this, slouching in the chair, picking yourself up, only to slouch again. Here's my solution. Put a nice little pillow right there for my bottom. Golden. Now, what if it, this chair was over here? It's all good. Got that covered too. An SPF 50 umbrella. Blocks the sun real nice. But you don't like the umbrella? That's fine. We can collapse the umbrella. Take off the umbrella. Heck, we don't need the umbrella. We'll just put it there. Back in 2008, the Spanish fire came through here. This used to be a, a campground with vault toilets, running water, and much more designated campsites. But after the fire, they never really rebuilt it. So you still have the remains of these really cool fire, uh, like grilling areas, if you will. But then you have a fire ring. Um, but the premise of this portion is I wanted to talk about safety gear. Here in the center of our camp, very easy to find, easy to spot with not much around it. We have a fire extinguisher. 
Underneath it, we have our fire permit. And then we have our medical bag that's gonna be full of you know, ibuprofen uh, and then uh, band-aids and all the things you hope you never need, but are like a spare tire. You're glad you have them when you need them. Uh, apparently these have enough food and water for two people for three days. We got them at Home Depot in the earthquake section. Uh, I haven't opened it up because there's a little safety seal and I don't really wanna break the safety seal. But anyway, next to that, we've got a hatchet for the fire in case we need to split wood. We have two five gallon buckets so that we can drowned our fire so that it is dead out as the permit says you're gonna come help me with this hmm? on the back it shows you pouring a bucket of water right on the back side of your fire permit so it's kind of hard to plausible deniability or play dumb leaning against the back side here is our trusty always reliable never have to worry about if a deer peed on it marshmallow roasting stick for our s'mores and then Starting fires, I, you know, a lot of people like to pride themselves on the, you know, using one match uh, or a certain time limit to get their fire started. Well, me, I just want my fire going and I like things to be easy and considering I'm in construction, this is my easiest solution. Uh, I bought this to sweat copper pipe, but I'll tell you it works darn good for starting a fire even when it's raining out. Or before the fire came through here in 2008, these were where you would cook. You would have a grate across the top and you would build your fire underneath and then you'd have your cooking surface on top. You still could do that. You could clean this out. No one's used it in a long time. It's mostly dust and debris in there. But scoop all that out and you could still use that. If you brought, say, like a Weber grill, you could put it across there, cook your bacon, burgers, and all that other stuff right on top of here if you wanted to, and then have your separate fire for staying warm on. Um, a lot of people like doing that because the, they can make this fire a lot colder and people can still stay warm and enjoy the ambiance of the fire that's over there. But right now we're using this as kind of a staging area that's very centralized in our camp. This tree is also kind of a central location for us. Next to the tree, we've got a rake so we can clear organic material from around the fire. We've also got a shovel, so if the fire gets out of control or needs to be manipulated, we've got a shovel. Up here is a, a very large nail somebody drove in that we're using to suspend our trash and recycling from in camp. Got one bag for trash, one bag for recycle. So when we go home, we're separating our stuff. We swing around to the other side of the tree. We've got more trash bags. Uh, I do sometimes put out a gun, but I don't always carry a gun when I go camping. I am out here and I feel very comfortable with or without this, just so we're clear. Next to that, I've got three fishing poles. I'm allowed two because I have a dual pole license, but it's like a spare tire. If one reel goes up, goes bad, or I break the tip off one, I've got a backup. Next to that, gotta have a broom camping, right? Hey, can you check if the lens clean? It seems like there's a greasy spot. There is. It's snake venom from earlier. Make sure you check out the video later. Some places we go camping have a picnic table or two and there's ample space, but other places will have them. They'll be damaged or dirty or they just won't be present at all. So we always like to come prepared with at least a couple of these really good folding tables. Pretty lightweight plastic, but very tough. And they fold up and down very easily and make a nice flat package that sits right on the inside walls of the trailer very conveniently for us. They hold plenty and they give us a lot of space to do all the nice cooking and prepping that we like to do. So welcome to the power table. We have the two tables for the kitchen, but I need a place to spread out and charge all the batteries because the Osmo, the uh, GoPros, the drones, the DSLR, um, the radios, the, uh, the, the music radio, I could keep going and going and going. We need a place to spread this stuff out and charge it. So here we've got a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter that's connected to a battery down below. I'll show you just in a second. Next, we've got chargers for the radios. Uh, this is like a multi-use charger for the, uh, so it'll charge four Mavic 2 batteries at the same time, but also I have two, two amp outputs for, or two amp USB outputs for charging any other device that runs off USB, You're from your cell phone to the gimbal we use to walk around and uh, get more stabilized footage. We can charge that all from here. If you swing around the other side, I'll show you the battery in. So welcome to my rat's nest. This is. We have an 85 amp hour deep cycle battery that we use during the evening when we don't want to run the generator to just simply run lights or any low uh, current draw load. We'll draw it off here uh, so we don't have to listen to the generator even though we have a Honda that's really quiet. Um, if I'm just charging like one Osmo battery, I'll use this. If we're using the lights for some ambiance, I'll just run it off the battery. Right now I'm running the generator so I have a 12 volt battery charge, smart battery charger charging the battery. But in the meantime, 
I could switch if I wanted to over and use the inverter. Again, it's pure sine wave, so it's not gonna hurt the electronics. Um, or on the sides, we have, this is a Minn Kota battery box. It's got, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cigarette lighter charge ports on either, either side. So in this case, we can run the fridge when we're not running the generator off the battery, or we can uh, plug in a USB uh, charge port off of this, like one you'd find in your car. We could run two of those and charge four devices if we wanted to, all from this box. And then when we're ready to go, I can undo these alligator clips and there's a nice heavy duty cloth strap to hold the lid on and I've got a handle, I can strap it down in the truck. Um, we also have alligator clip to male cigarette lighter adapter that we can use when this is secured in the truck uh, from the seven pin connector in the bed of the truck, we can back charge this battery when we're driving around. But when we're stationed in camp, we typically leave the refrigerator back in camp, so we need a way to charge it. And right now, it's this battery charger. At some point, sure, we're going to get into a panel and an inverter and charge controller. But right now, this works. The charge, the smart battery charger, was inexpensive. Um, all this stuff is pretty inexpensive. But uh, again, to reiterate, pure sine wave power inverter. So is our Honda. Those are extremely important if you're running or charging electronic equipment. Welcome to our water station. So this is spring water that we got from further up FH7. You can find a, two videos, in fact, if you scroll down uh, for spring water in this area with a link to the uh, exact location so you can go get it yourself. We were there yesterday and got, I think, 20 gallons. In, uh, I think we spent more time walking around enjoying the place than actually harvesting water. But anyway, any you, you know, it's real quick to fill bottles, but also after you, you can use it as a hand washing station. But with that said, when we're out here as a group, if you're gonna wash your hands, somebody with the clean hands runs the valve, while the person with the dirty hands is gonna go below and simply wash. So we're using them both, but we're adding several degrees of separation between what we're drinking, and it's good, and washing our hands. But we can do both from the same location. Behind here, we got some uh, body wash, some hand wipes, hand sanitizer, and some dish so plenty of choices back in there the simple square sawhorse folds up real flat real nice goes right in the trailer with no issues at all so this works really good for us but maybe in the comments below tell us what you use one of the most important things about camping is eating and eating well making sure that everything gets there that you want to have as all the different components of your meal so we got a really great Yeti cooler and for a while this was our go-to solution for our, all of our cold goods but we also noticed how awesomely tough it was. And so when we changed over to a powered refrigerator to take with us camping, we started to use the Yeti for our dry goods storage. And my logic after a while was to use the strength of the Yeti to protect our heaviest things, um, basically to protect our plastic totes from our heaviest items. Because sometimes when we're camping and we're taking something with us like a glass jar of Classico or a bottle of red wine, if that's jumping up and down in the back of the trailer, it could break the lighter weight plastic tubs, even though they're very tough. So those thing, kind of things go in the Yeti, but wrapped up in some old towels. So we have these on hand. We just wrap up things like our olive oil and our balsamic vinegar. So we have the very best and tastiest things and everything's safe inside the Yeti cooler. So for a lot of our other dry goods that are on the lighter side and more crushable and fragile side, like bread and chips, we use these plastic totes down here. These are really tough and they come in many different sizes. This size is very handy for us. They fit nicely into our trailer. They hold a lot of stuff. In fact, we rarely have trouble leaving at least some extra space in these when we pack all our dry goods. So we've got lighter things like tortillas, but also loaves of bread because they are not gonna crush each other. We put slightly heavier things on the bottom and the softer, more crushable items on top so that everything arrives alive. Dried fruit, cider and drink mixes, dog kibble, all light enough to ride in the lightweight dry goods tote. For all of our dishes, silverware, everything else, we have another established tote that we use. It's pretty jumbled most of the time, but we make it work, nest things inside of each other. It's a bit of a Tetris game. We like to bring our AeroPress for coffee. It, if you haven't seen these, they're pretty great for especially portable purposes. They're plastic, but they make press coffee. 
even better than a French press in a way for those who don't like too much mud because they come with a little paper filter and they work anywhere you can get boiling water. So perfect camping solution for us. They make a great strong cup of coffee. You're also gonna find a full stainless steel stock pot with a strainer because we like to do potatoes and pasta and things. Even out here, we have a big enough stove to boil water pretty quickly. So we go ahead and make room for the stainless steel in the collection. Otherwise, it's pretty standard camping stuff. There's unbreakable plates, compact pans. Some of them have folding handles, really handy gadgets. What else do we have down here? There's some stuff in here we don't get out very often, but I think I just saw, oh, there it is. We brought the portable espresso maker. Mostly, to be honest, this gets a lot of action as a steamer because we love steamed milk for hot chocolate when we're camping. Mwah. But it's a, actually a pretty decent little espresso maker. No electricity required. Welcome to our dishwashing station. This is where we're washing our dishes and here's the way we wash our dishes. So when we were out shopping for camping showers, I at first was looking for solar showers. You, know, you fill up a bag of water and you leave it out in the sun and it's gravity fed to give you a shower. Those are great. Right next to that was this. Uh, for 10 bucks more, it's battery self-contained, so is the pump and it came with a shower head even. So you get an on off button. The whole thing is completely submergible into the water. And it's also USB rechargeable, so it's really handy. We've used this, taken a bunch of showers, washed dishes for four or five days and still had some battery left. But what, the way that we like to operate this, because you don't want to just stick it in here, you're going to run out of water real quick. So what we'll do is we'll do it with two people. One person stands here with this and the other person will stand with the sponges. So we turn it on, stick it in there, which I haven't put a whole lot of water, so hopefully it gets going fairly quickly. While somebody else takes the soap, and the sponge and scrubby scrubby, the other person's gonna rinse. So while one person is washing, the other person is recirculating the water back into the containers so we're not running out of water faster. If you went like this, it's gonna run out rather quickly and be kind of a mess to clean up with. But if somebody's standing here holding this, oh, you ready for rinse? And helps you rinse off your dishes and then puts it back in, you're gonna save the warm water. It's gonna last longer and go further. But also when we go out, we actually carry two of these. So we've got two of these stock pots. They're aluminum, so they, take, they don't take up much room and they're extremely lightweight to travel with and one fits inside the other. If you want to take a shower, we fill both these, stick them on the stove with 30,000 BTUs. These both get warm enough for a shower in no time at all. Put these on a stump or uh, we have an additional sawhorse that we're not even currently using similar to the square one we showed you for our, uh, where we wash our hands. Stick it on there, put this part up in a tree and you've got yourself a warm shower. We like to have a stove with some pretty serious capacity. We picked out this two burner Camp Chef. Each one has 30,000 BTUs. The hardest thing now about this stove is actually getting a low setting because it's even the low setting here is pretty high. And plus, in a very windy conditions, you have to keep it a little above low to keep it from blowing out in the wind. So be aware of that. We do put on these wind baffles. We try to find the most sheltered location for the stove and we also try to make sure that it gets the premium most level spot we can find because we really need to have stability for good safety and that security of being able to move heavy pans around. You can see we also like to bring our heavy cast iron with us. It's got so many advantages. It's so tough, so durable and produces amazing results even under the highest heat that would often damage, you know, the kind of pots you might use more typically at home. We hook up the gas over here out of the way. Sometimes we forget, but we try to keep the valve closed between uses so the that we eliminate any chance of there being any leaking or whatever. Otherwise, very typical setup. We've got a barbecue or a stick lighter here. In some situations, we'll tie it to the stove to make sure it doesn't drift away, but a lot of times when it's just the two of us, it'll just sit here right here on top of the propane tank. Our in-camp lighting solution is a string light. 
starting to see these all over the place and they're perfect. I can see why everybody's buying them. I think these were $39, $49 or something at Home Depot. And they come in multiple types. Uh, you get glass bulbs or plastic bulbs, LED or incandescent bulbs. You can even get them with the color change, but that just seems kind of frivolous to me. I mean, who am I to judge? I've got all this frivolous stuff in here, but still the color changing, mm, I don't know. Just know that they're out there. But we have more lights than we could use. I think this is a 50 foot strand and it doubles over at the end over there and it wraps around the tree right next to you right here. So plugged into the end of the string lights, I have this inexpensive clamp light with a spotlight LED that's really, really bright. It uses, I think, 15 watts, but it's a floodlight, so it's a lot of light. I have it facing away from camp and kind of up. So at night when we're sitting back in camp and cooking and whatnot, we can see all of these trees in the background. It adds ambiance for someone like me who's an experienced camper and I don't care what's out there, but for a new camper, it adds that peace of mind and security. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. That's something we do and they're fairly inexpensive. So until this trip here, we'd always use the igloo cooler to, as the drinking and washing hand station, but we found it to be kind of cumbersome and it doesn't really work. The volume of water that comes out is kind of inconsistent. And if you really need to get a lot of water really quickly, like for a water bottle, this takes a long time. Uh, I've had this forever and ever. You can see it's got a crack in it. So we're trying to get as much life out of it as we can. But for right now, we've actually been using it to haul water to put out our fires with. Um, Next in line, we have these blue containers that are BPA free that we got, I think at Walmart. These are awesome though, as far as I'm concerned. They're very thick, heavy duty plastic. The nice part is you can see from this one here, when you're transporting it, this one's actually full of spring water. The lid goes inside the container so you don't have to risk it breaking off. It does have an air vent in the back to bleed air so the water can come out very quickly. But here's your view with the spigot sticking out. So again, this can be inverted to go on the inside. And these hold, I think it's seven gallons. So turning these spigots around is real simple. This one's empty. Turn the valve off, that does matter. Flip it around inside. I'll usually give it a rinse off, but this one's empty. So and for video purposes, I'm just gonna stick it in and thread it on. And now this is watertight. If, if it were completely full, I could turn it upside down, no water should spill out. The spigot's not is sealed and not going to break off. But again, uh, I mentioned turn the valve off. If you left the valve on, water would just free flow right out of here. Um, this one's taken quite a bit of beating and it doesn't leak at all. I like these so far. I bought a couple other styles, but they don't, the valve is, uh, they're more of a pour spout. And then some of them are long and upright, so they're likely to fall over. They're harder to secure in the truck but also they're really thin plastic. I'm worried about them popping in the bed of the truck because in the bed of the truck, I've got chain, I've got straps, I've got uh, ratchet straps, all kinds of things that poke a hole real quick and real easy. So I've found these to be really good. The next to the water jugs is the tackle box full of stuff for bass fishing, uh, the pan fish and for trout. We're up here near Pleskett Meadows. After we shoot this video, we're gonna head up and go get some trout. Well, that's the idea anyway. I find these little black and yellow totes to be so far the best solution. They're inexpensive, they stack, and they seem to be fairly secure. I've yet to have a lid blow off on the freeway. I see them on the side of the freeway, but I haven't had one happen. But in this case, I use this one as like my generic camping tote. I've got a mosquito tent that's basically a ceiling with four walls. I've got some rope. I do have a solar shower, which you can tell I take very good care of. You know, I got a, a fold up chair, another mosquito net, some string. We use this as the floor for our shower. Generally, we'll find a spot that's more gravelly than dirt and then lay this out and that'll be the floor in the shower. It's kind of like my junk drawer of boxes, if you will. Everything that I think I might need, I throw it in here. And a lot of this stuff does get used. Here's a propane hose. So we bring the Mr. Buddy in the winter time. Uh, we can run this through the door with the tank outside the trailer and run the, the, the burner inside. Um, and we got some completely randomness. Like here's a uh, cigarette lighter splitter if we wanted more of them. I got some caution tape, not sure why, but if I wanted to do battery to female cigarette lighter, I got those. We've got the old, really old style. I think it's like Jimmy something or other. Orbix hand heater with some zipper, Zippo fluid. You know, face mask, little hand saw. There's all kinds of goodies in here. Uh, rubber mallet. The reason you're seeing caution tape in here is because we go really far into the forest to make a bunch of different turns. 
we'll hang like a three or four foot streamer from the side of the road. So if you're to Y and it's to turn left, we'll put it on the far left side. And then when we're done, we'll just pull it down and take it with us, throw it in the trash. Uh, I just so happens because I'm in construction, I have an abundance of this stuff. It's easy to come by. Um, I do plan to check out the biodegradable stuff. I've never seen it. I just heard about it about a month ago. Um, but even a Frisbee, you never know, right? Um, you got a roll of duct tape, some sunscreen. I mean, it's all stuff that just kind of lives in here. Even between trips, I try not to go in here and pull anything out so that I know when I pull it out to go load it up, it's all still in here. Next to that tote, and we already talked about power. Well, <laughs> there's a lot more to it than that. I got an extra spotlight. Sometimes this is nice. This is a great one, like when it's really foggy out. It broadcasts a super bright light, and you can see the fog rolling and turbulence in the wind. We got more extension cords. I got backup light bulbs. We have the smart link, so we can hook two of the smaller Honda generators together. I think we have a 2200 watt, so as long as it's equivalent size, we can tether the two together. So that's it for this box, but let's go over. We've covered the battery end. Uh, let's cover the generator end. So our main power plant is an EU2200 Honda. So this would be the brains of the operation if you were to tether two of them together. The other one will have the 12 volt output and two plugs. This one does not have 12 volt output and has a twist lock for the higher amperage output. We like the Honda because it's pure sine wave, which is extremely important when you're charging things like uh, your drone batteries and your other camera batteries. They're easy to maintain, they're easy to service. These are perfect generators. Granted, they are a higher end on the budget. You can get them a lot cheaper, but you're gonna be putting up with more noise and more service. So to us, it was what we went with. And starting is a breeze. You just turn the switch on the side and As you can tell from that brief demonstration, it's quiet. It started on the first pull. These are fantastic generators. Between the generator and the power station over at the table, I have 12 gauge extension cords running. It's probably, I don't know, 150 feet, maybe. I'll just try and round the number up. So I'm going with a larger gauge cord because you don't want to do, if you did like uh, the, the orange ones you're used to seeing that are 16 or 18 gauge, uh, if you run a bunch of current at that end, you're actually run the risk of literally melting this extension cord or catching it on fire. There's a reason contractors don't use those thin extension cords. They use these bigger 12 gauge cords. This 12 gauge cord is the same size wiring as what's in your house walls. So if that's in the walls and it can handle the current, so can this. So I can run it all the way over there and I don't have to worry about voltage drop. And I also don't have to worry about this thing going up in smoke. So if you do have to run extension cords, do look at the amount of power and amperage that those extension cords can handle. Because if you overload them, you could, it's a fire hazard or damage your equipment. This is my toolbox during the day, nine to five. I travel with tools in it, but when we go camping, we empty it out. It's a box trailer, six by 10, single axle. But it, when we go camping, it's great because we could just throw everything in there and close the doors. Uh, and we don't have to worry about it blowing away. We don't have to worry about rain, sleet, or snow getting all our stuff wet. When we get to camp, the other thing is, Again, we don't have to worry about rain, sleet, or snow. We sleep in here, we're cozy and dry. Worst thing we got to deal with is the rain hitting the metal roof, which to me, I love that sound anyway. But the other aspect is storage. In this case, my ammo box won't fit underneath, but it's still tucked in there. I've got my gas can tucked in out of the way in the shade. But let me show you around back what I do. We've never had anything stolen from camp, but if we had something that we were concerned about, or if we were in a location we were concerned, we can padlock the door shut. But also, Nice part about the trailer is storage for underneath. I could put my gun case under there since it's just plastic anyway. I put a tarp up under here. I bring a tarp even though I've got the trailer and it's going to keep me dry. Uh, it makes a great backstop or uh, privacy wall for the shower. Uh, also, uh, I've been camping before and people don't bring a trailer. They bring a tent and their tent isn't as good at keeping the rain or the snow out. It's good to just have a tarp. Again, it's one of those things that doesn't weigh much. And when I've got this much cubic volume to just throw that on top, it makes sense. But I can tuck it up under the trailer and even when it's raining, it's going to stay dry unless we get a downpour and I'm parked in a puddle. As long as I've got drainage, this stuff's going to stay dry. And you saw me stick these back in there. These are the vents for our trailer. There's one right over here in the back corner on the bottom and there's one in the front up high. Uh, what we've discovered is that this back one, when we're driving behind the, with behind the truck, the amount of dust that gets created, the dust gets sucked in from this back corner and then goes out through the front. So basically when you open the door, it's this big dust cloud comes and just obliterates you. So I pull these out 
and stuff both vents completely with rags. And then when I get into camp, I pull the rags out. But I hold on to these because when I'm driving with my tools, I want them to be able to breathe and not overheat. So welcome to my house. This would be the front door, if you will. You got a nice mat to wipe your feet on before you go inside so you're not tracking a bunch of pine needles in there. I was talking about storage under the trailer, your boots. Stick them a foot under, they're not gonna get wet. Flip flops, when you gotta go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, stick them right at the edge. You're good to go. You wanna go inside? Come on, let's go. Sleeping, extremely important, right, to everybody. So here's our bed. In this case, we've got two negative 25 degree bags that we put one underneath and one on top. It is overkill for this time of year. It's July, but we just don't zip them closed. So we do just fine. Underneath the first layer though, we've got our pillows. And there's another negative 25 degree bag. Underneath here, we have a folding foam pad that we could use as like a futon. If we wanted to, we could tri-fold it, stick it up against the wall. If it was raining outside, we could hang out in here and read books or play cards or whatever we wanted to do. But underneath that is a little hack that I wanted to show you, I've been doing for quite a while. These are medical heat pads. These ones are fairly old. They don't have the safety, like they don't turn off after a certain amount of time. They don't maintain a certain temperature. You got high, medium, low and off, that's it. But if you take that and slip it up under your bed, put your bed down and then invert your pillow on top of that heat pad. Now you're gonna heat the bleeding edge of your pillow and your sleeping bag before you climb into it. There's one here and there's one over here. These only draw 15 watts. That's together less than most light bulbs. Moving on from here, we've got coat rack storage. But generally when I'm here, I'll, or when I'm transporting, I'll turn these around so they're facing backwards. They're letting, I find they fall off less this way. We've also got a nice little shelf if we want to, to put stuff on, you know, our toothbrush or medications or whatever we want quick access to. And here's one of the ports I was talking about that lets the dust in through. I just stuff it full with a rag. When we get to our destination, we pull the rag out and then we have, now we have ventilation while we're sleeping in here. We have stayed in here when it was cold with uh, three people and did the Mr. Buddy. Moisture was a huge problem. It almost started to rain on the inside. So having the air flowing through is extremely important. The Mr. Buddy is going to put out the right amount of heat. You're not going to be cold in here. I've stayed in here in a spot where it was like, uh, let's say 35 uh, or 38 degrees. We'll round up. I came in here with the Mr. Buddy running was 80 degrees. <laughs> so it doesn't get cold in here no matter what the weather's like. Behind me here, we've got a little fold out table. This thing collapses just like the other tables, flat. So we can line them all up against the trailer wall and they're all pushed up against one side, no problem. But we got our toothbrushes, Oop. quick access to flashlight, chapstick. God, we gotta have chapstick everywhere you go. But also a Philips Hue light that's battery operated. So as an ambient light we've used this Philips light for quite a while it has its built-in battery that we can charge with the generator when it's running but it also changes colors to set our mood we can also set it out in camp it's kind of like a hey tables over here when the rest is dark or just press and hold and it goes off but these are really cool in camp next to that we've got another safety kit we've also got a uh, some kind of rack for a bathroom but we use it for toilet paper got a few hats our mask Holds the belts. Everybody needs a dustpan to clean out, right? I mean, we've got stuff hanging around to make it real easy. Along this, the roof in the trailer, we have these uh, silicone encased LEDs that are waterproof that we can use to uh, add light. When we want a lot of light in here, we have one here, one in the middle and one at the end. They run off 12 volts, so it makes it really easy and convenient and they use almost no power. Um, but they do light things up quite a bit and the fact that they're waterproof, I don't have to worry about them out here. I simply zip tied them up there and ran a piece of wire down in the rung to a centralized location and we have a lot of light when we need it in here. Or we, again, we have our little ambient light. If you want almost nothing at all, we got a flashlight. So welcome to my back door. Let's show you the inside. Boo -boo. Everybody needs a bottle cap opener, right, for your bottles. We've got ourselves a paper towel dispenser. We've also secured several hanging points from the wall for when we're traveling, but also when you're staying. Sometimes it's nice to hang your backpack from or your fishing poles from to get them out of the weather if it were hot or raining. 
The back of the trailer also makes excellent storage for all my camera gear. Uh, we have several drones, several uh, action cameras, a DSLR, tons of batteries. I've got a tote just for electrical cables of all kinds, HDMI cables, micro SD cables, power strip, it's all in here. We got drones and then another, uh, not very hard case, but a simple case to put all of my bigger stuff in, the tripods, light filters, the landing pad for the drone and such, all fit right in here. But if I pull these out, I'll show you what's behind them. So around the perimeter of the trailer, we have these carpet squares. They're great because when one gets dirty, you can simply clean it off. They make it nice because you're not walking on the, the floor that I do haul tools with during the week, but also a client was getting rid of these. So rather than throw them away, I gave them a second life. I'm repurposing them, if you will. Um, but they're really nice on your feet when you don't have shoes on to, when you're getting dressed in the morning. Also adds a tiny bit of insulation, if you will, to the floor. Um, so again, this is our foam pad. And how we hold it up is we have, this is a full sheet of plywood, but we cut it down the middle. It's easier to carry uh, two foot by eight feet then four feet by eight feet so we have two of those that when we're traveling they go with the tables they go along the side of the trailer and they always go on this side because I have these anchor points to tie them up so they don't fall out while we're driving but how we hold these up the same totes you saw over there so when we get to camp or when we're traveling to camp we use these to get our stuff out here then when we get to camp we set up and we make sure that we always have at least four of these that are gonna remain either empty or we don't need to access them very quickly. Like this one here. And there's a couple of extra sleeping pads in case somebody was in a tent and needed a yoga mat or an inflatable mattress. There's one in here. But if we stick it up under there and line it up with the center of the, the tote, that holds up our bed. So again, there's four of them. There's two here and two back there. Two under each piece of plywood. And so far, this has done fantastic. I know the timing's kind of ironic that it's not actually in here, but the battery just started chirping, so we removed it. We don't actually have the Mr. Buddy with us, so not having the smoke detector to me isn't a big deal because carbon monoxide and smoke aren't a huge thing. Uh, we're not smokers, so we're not going to fall asleep with a cigarette in our hands. Um, but when we run the Mr. Buddy, sometimes we'll hang it from uh, one of these hooks or from the ceiling to get it up off the ground so it doesn't catch the bed on fire. Give us a little more floor space. But we do run the dual type where it's a carbon monoxide and smoke detector just to be safe even though we run the hose through the door and the door one this door always stays ajar and has air flowing through it with the two vents it's better to be safe than sorry what if one of us falls asleep and the the heater starts to burn funny or it does catch something on fire we do have protection so we try to think about these things when we develop our trailer this is no rv by any stretch but it's extremely comfortable again i've stayed in here in cold weather rainy weather and i've never had an issue i've always been warm and dry a place to come stretch out in it's really easy to change my clothes and not touch the edge of the tent and get my sleeve all wet or I might come in here and my uh, sleeping bag was touching the edge of the tent and now there's a puddle in the bottom and now my bed's all wet. It doesn't happen in here. So to me, the expense of $3,000 was very easy to justify because we can stow all our stuff in here when we're camping, but we can get it out here clean, safe, and reliably. I think you did a great job. Phenomenal. We missed the dog. Yeah, we gotta we use the joystick to shoot the dog with the camera. We're gonna get that dog with the robot camera. Mm. What's that? Is that your belly? I think I see some distinct side eyes.